How's it going today? The iceberg that I'm talking about in this video is the weapons to be used in World War 3. This iceberg was created by user Zergit. The higher layers are more well-known weapons that are more likely to be used, and the lower down it goes, the weapons become more unknown and some are just hypotheticals. However, some of the entries are very real and dangerous. I got some Mob of the Dead gameplay in the background. Thank you for watching. Starting with layer 1. New conventional firearm models. An example would be the newer models of AK-47 assault rifles, being the AK-19 and the AK-15. New conventional military vehicles. An example would be the Armada tank. Light machine guns. Conventional machine guns are very heavy and impractical. These ones have a reduced size with light materials. Adaptable mobile bullets or bullets with 100% accuracy. There's two concepts in play here. The first is a bullet that is airborne, and before reaching its target, it can be configured to adapt to weather conditions, such as wind, snow, rain, sandstorm, or humidity. The other concept is that of a bullet that's capable of altering its trajectory. By combining these two, one could create a 100% accurate bullet. Metal Storm a supermachine gun capable of firing thousands of projectiles per second, created by an Australian company. The purchase of this weapon was cancelled, but the model still exists and is functional. The FGM Javelin This is an American-made, portable man anti-tank system. It's been in service since 1996 and is continuously upgraded. It's the most powerful shoulder-mounted missile launcher. Now on to Layer 2. Sarin gas. This is a colorless and odorless liquid used as a chemical weapon. Due to its extreme power as a nerve agent, sarin is widely considered a weapon of mass destruction. In mid-1939, the formula for the agent was passed to the Chemical Warfare Section of the German Army Weapons Office, which ordered that it be brought into mass production for wartime use. Pilot plants were built, and a high production facility was under construction but it was never finished by the end of World War II. By the end of World War II, estimates for total Soren production by Nazi Germany range from 500 kilograms to 10 tons. Production and stockpiling of Soren was outlawed as of April 1997 by the Chemical Weapons Convention of 1993. It's classified as a Schedule I substance. Sarin in its purest form is estimated to be 26 times more deadly than cyanide. Mustard gas. As a chemical weapon, mustard gas was first used in World War I and has been used in several armed conflicts since then, including the Iran-Iraq War, resulting in more than 100,000 casualties. Mustard gases are extremely toxic and have powerful blistering effects on victims. Anthrax. A lethal virus that affects the respiratory tract, it was used in a bioterrorist card attacks in the 1990s by a cult in the Japanese subway. In 2001, powdered anthrax spores were deliberately put into letters that were mailed through the U.S. postal system. 22 people, including 12 mail handlers, got anthrax, and 5 of these 22 people died. Anthrax spores are easily found in nature, can be produced in a lab, and can last for a long time in the environment. It makes a good weapon because it can be released quietly without anyone knowing. The microscopic spores could be put into powders, sprays, food, and water. Because they are so small, you may not be able to see, smell, or taste them. White Phosphorus The phosphorus would be in a solution of carbon disulfide. When the carbon disulfide evaporates, the phosphorus bursts into flames. The same formula was also used in arson in Australia. It is called the White Death due to its lethality. The British Army introduced the first factory-built white phosphorus grenades in late 1916 during the First World War. White phosphorus munitions were used extensively by the U.S. forces in the Vietnam and by Russian forces in the First and Second Chechen War. White phosphorus grenades were used by the U.S. in Vietnam to destroy Viet Cong tunnel complexes as they would burn up all the oxygen. However, white phosphorus is not forbidden by the CWC if it's used within the context that does not require or does not intend to use the toxic properties of it. White phosphorus is normally used to produce smoke to camouflage movement. Orange Agent Upgrades Agent Orange was a herbicide used during the Vietnam War. 
Improved versions could be used to create famine in enemy countries and contaminate the soil. VX and Novichok. These are nerve agents capable of killing a person in minutes just by touching them. The VX is British and the Novichok is Russian. Russian scientists who developed the nerve agent claim they are the deadliest ever made, with some variants possibly 5 to 8 times more potent than VX. In the 21st century, Novichok agents came to public attention after they were used to poison opponents of the Russian government. Layer number 3 The Schuer Gustav was a giant rail-mounted cannon capable of easily destroying urban structures built during the Third Reich's regime in Germany. It was impractical but very intimidating. If any power wishes, they could build an improved model. The MQ-9 Reaper the General Atomics MQ-9 Reaper is a UAV capable of being remotely controlled or autonomous flight. It was designed for the United States Air Force. Little Killer Drone Swarms These would be small drones loaded with ammo or explosives to attack very specific targets, similar to what Ukraine and Russia are doing. Satan's Missile A Russian super missile capable of destroying a large region. The United States has similar models. The first contract for the production of the Satan's missiles was signed in August 2022. Hypersonic Torpedoes Torpedoes are much slower when compared to missiles. With the physics of water, hypersonic torpedoes are much faster. Hypersonic Intercontinental Missiles that are non-nuclear These are very fast missiles that would be on the same continent they were fired on without any nuclear capability. Acoustic Weapons these would be weapons that use sonic frequencies to damage opponents. Extremely high power sound waves can disrupt or destroy the eardrums of a target and cause severe pain or disorientation. This is usually sufficient to incapacitate a person. There are less powerful sound waves that can cause humans to experience nausea or discomfort. It has been reported that sonic attacks may have taken place at the American Embassy in Cuba in 2016 and 2017. It has also been reported that China has developed the first handheld portable sonic gun to target protesters. Military vehicles controlled by AI. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a self-driving vehicle that can operate on its own. Advanced robots. Boston Dynamics already has advanced models of various types of robots. It would be the same thing but applied to military. Advanced exoskeletons. These would be exoskeletons that grant more strength and resistance to soldiers. China has an exoskeleton model that is used for carrying ammo. At this point in time, it can provide around 45 pounds of assisted strength to the user. Layer number 4 Thermobaric bombs are munitions that are designed to produce more heat and overpressure than conventional explosives. They do this by exploding a vapor. Their main use initially was in airborne fuel air explosive bombs. While the United States has concentrated on airborne weapons, Russia has produced thermobaric weapons and warheads, from airborne bombs to rifle grenades. Thermobaric weapons have been around for over 60 years and their main damaging effect is through primary blast. The father of all bombs. This bomb is reportedly similar to the US military's mother of all bombs. This weapon would therefore be the most powerful non-nuclear weapon in the world. The father of all bombs was successfully field tested in the late evening of September 2007. The new weapon is to replace several smaller types of nuclear bombs in the Russian arsenal. According to the Russian deputy chief of staff, the new bomb was smaller than the mother of all bombs, but much deadlier because the temperature at the center of the blast is twice as high. Sar Nuclear Bomb the SAR bomb is the most powerful nuclear weapon ever created and tested. The Soviet physicist Andrea Sarkov oversaw this project. The project was ordered in July 1961 as part of the resumption of nuclear testing after the test ban, with the detonation time to coincide with the 22nd Congress of the Communist Party. It was tested on the 30th of October 1961. The test verified new design principles for high-yield thermonuclear charges, allowing, as its final report put it, the design of a nuclear device of practically unlimited power. A secret U.S. Renaissance aircraft named Speedlight Alpha, monitored the blast, coming close enough to have its paint scorched. A 100 megatons nuclear bomb. 
The SAR bomb could have theoretically yielded as much as 100 megatons, but it would have resulted in a dangerous level of nuclear fallout. The radius is 65 kilometers, and the estimated number of victims would have been about 2.5 million people. Hydrogen Bombs An H-bomb is a second generation nuclear weapon design. Its greater sophistication affords it vastly greater destructive power than the first generation of nuclear bombs. However, detailed knowledge of fusion weapons is classified to some degree in virtually every industrialized nation. In the United States, such knowledge can be classified as restricted data. Neutron Bombs A neutron bomb, officially defined as a type of enhanced radiation weapon, is a low-yield thermonuclear weapon designed to maximize lethal neutron radiation, while minimizing the physical power of the blast itself. Initial development was carried out as part of the project Dove and Starling, and an early device was tested underground in early 1962. Designs for a weaponized version were developed in 1963. The Trident SLBM This is a submarine launch ballistic missile. Built by Lockheed Martin Space in Sunnyvale, California, and deployed with the American and British navies. It was first deployed in March 1990 and remains in service. R-36 ICBM The R-36 is a family of intercontinental ballistic missiles designed by the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Development of the R-36 was begun in Ukraine, which at the time was part of the Soviet Union. In 1962, and built upon the work of the R-16 program, news of development of the orbital version caused alarm in the West, with the possibility that Soviets would be able to launch a large number of nuclear weapons into orbit where there was no capability to intercept them. Cobalt Bomb A cobalt bomb is a type of salted bomb a nuclear weapon that's designed to produce enhanced amount of radioactive fallout. It's intended to contaminate a large area with radioactive material. The concept of the cobalt bomb was originally described in a radio program by physicist Leo S. on February 26, 1950. His intent was not to propose that such a weapon to be built, but to show that the nuclear weapon technology would soon reach a point where it could end human life on Earth. In Australia on September 14, 1957, they tested a bomb using cobalt pellets and a radiochemical tracer for estimating yield. This was considered a failure and the experiment was not repeated. In Russia in March 1971, the Kama project produced relatively high amounts of cobalt-60 from the steel that surrounded the Taiga devices. With this fusion generated neutron activation being responsible for half the gamma dose in 2011. In 2015, a page from an apparent Russian nuclear torpedo design was leaked. The design was titled Oceanic Multipurpose System Status 6, later given the official name Poseidon. The document stated that the torpedo would create wide areas of radioactive contamination, rendering them unusable for the military, economic, or other activity for a long time. It is speculated that the warhead would be a cobalt bomb. It is not known whether the Status 6 is a real project or whether it's just Russian disinformation. Layer number 5 Global Scale PSYOPs these are operations used to convey selected information to audiences to influence their motives and reasoning, and ultimately the behavior of governments, organizations, groups, and large foreign powers. This could include propaganda or even something such as these TikTok military e-girls. In the US cases, they use this to induce or reinforce behavior perceived to be favorable in US objectives and other governments would use this to be favorable to their own citizens. Global scale psyops can be used both during peacetime and especially to influence the minds in conflict. Massive disinfo. This involves the intentional dissemination of false information, with an end goal of misleading, confusing, or manipulating an audience. Disinformation attacks may be executed by political, economic, or individual actors to influence state or non-state entities in domestic or foreign populations. These attacks are commonly employed to reshape attitudes and beliefs, drive a particular agenda, or elicit certain actions from a target audience. Tactics include the presentation of incorrect or misleading information, the creation of uncertainty, and the undermining of both correct information and the credibility of information. Disinformation attacks can be employed through traditional media outlets, such as state-sponsored TV channels and radio. However, disinformation attacks have been increasingly widespread and potent, 
with the advent of social media. Mass hysteria. In sociology and psychology, mass hysteria is a phenomenon that transmits collective illusions of threats, whether they're real or imaginary, through a population and society as a result of rumors and fear. Layer number six, EM pulse weapon. Electromagnetic pulse is an electromagnetic wave similar to radio waves. It differs from the usual radio wave in two important ways. First, it creates much higher electric field strengths, whereas a radio signal might produce a thousandth of a volt or less in a receiving antenna, an EMP pulse might produce thousands of volts. Secondly, it is a single pulse of energy that disappears completely in a small fraction of a second. It is rather similar to the electric field from lightning, but the rise in voltage is typically a hundred times faster. This means that most equipment designed to protect electrical facilities from lightning works too slowly to be effective against EMP. There's no evidence that EMP is a physical threat to humans, however electrical or electronic systems, particularly those connected to long wires such as power lines or antennas, can undergo damage. This could be actual physical damage to an electrical component, or just a temporary disruption of an operation. An attacker might detonate a few weapons at high altitudes in an effort to destroy or damage communications and electric power systems. It can be expected that EMP can cause massive disruption for an indeterminable amount of time and would cause huge economic damages. Zero Day Breach Malware Zero Day is a broad term that describes recently discovered security vulnerabilities that hackers can use to attack systems. A zero day attack takes place when hackers exploit the flaw before the developers have a chance to fix it. Massive hacking activity. Keeping this one simple, different governments around the world do and will continue to hire hackers to find flaws in their data. This could also be used as a weapon with governments trying to hack into each other's data. Military AI. This could include anything from AI drones, self-driving cars, or something such as AI robots. Layer 7 Chimera This provides its key stakeholders with the ability to have maximum situational awareness for their cryptographic networks. In the past, you could only see a small portion of the network at any given time, and had to physically switch between multiple platforms to piece together a full picture of the network. Chimera allows a full view of the network from one location on a single software platform, acting as a dashboard for the configuration of national security agencies. It is a type 1 defense networking product that protects both unclassified and classified networks and assets. Nanotechnology Weaponry Despite the secrecy surrounding the development of nanoweapons, some people are convinced that there is confident threat. This fear is based in part on the ranking of nanotechnology weapons by the Global Catastrophe Risk Conference. It is the most probable means to cause human extinction by the end of the century. Examples of nanoweapons discussed in the book include nano-enhanced lasers, smaller munitions with increased explosive force, and self-replicating smart nanorobots. These robots search for and destroy targets without human input, and self-replicate with materials found in their environment. According to the author, SSNs are gravely dangerous nanoweapons that humanity should prohibit. While considerable resources have been dedicated to countering nuclear weapons, little is publicly known about protection from nanoweapons. Even though I had quite a bit to say, a workable definition of nanoweapons is still not there. We don't necessarily know what they'd look like being used in a military sense. Rods of God or the Thor Project Project Thor included a satellite launched into space with a group of 20 foot long. Various treaties prevent use of any space-based weapon systems based on chemical explosives, chemical gases or dust, biological and nuclear weapons. Thor used the kinetic energy of a Tunguskan rod traveling over Mach 10. The explosive yield on impact was roughly 11.5 tons of TNT. The US has the technology to deploy these at will. The main drawback in the early 2000s was cost and some concern that if the projectile exceeded Mach 10, it could melt the non-Tunguskan parts of the project. I found no official word on this project's status. It is probable that it is still under development because conceptually it is viable. The US has all the technology needed, but the requirements to make development cost effective was the main problem. It was intended to be a network of small kinetic energy weapons that would be placed in low earth orbit 
and used to target and destroy enemy spacecrafts, missiles, and other targets. However, the project was never officially adopted by any government or military organization, and did not move beyond the conceptual stage. Sun Gun Reconstruction the sun gun or helio beam is a theoretical orbital weapon, which makes use of a concave mirror mounted on a satellite. It would be used to concentrate sunlight onto a small area of the Earth's surface, destroying targets or killing through heat. In 1929, the German physicist Oberth developed plans for a space station from which a 100 meter wide concave mirror could be used to reflect sunlight onto a concentrated point at Earth. In World War II, a group of German scientists began to expand Orbis' idea of creating a superweapon that could utilize the sun's energy. This so-called sun gun would be part of a space station 5,100 miles above Earth. The scientists calculated that a huge reflector made of metallic sodium with an area of 3.5 miles could produce enough focused heat to make an ocean boil or burn a city. After being questioned by American officers, the Germans claimed that the sun gun could be completed within 50 to 100 years. Status 6 Poseidon The Poseidon, previously known as Russian codename Status 6, is an autonomous, nuclear-powered, unmanned, underwater vehicle reportedly in production. It is capable of delivering both conventional and nuclear warheads. The Poseidon is one of six new Russian strategic weapons announced by Russian President Vladimir Putin in March 2018. The Poseidon is intended to serve as a response to the U.S. withdrawal from the ABM Treaty. The Poseidon warhead can contaminate a large area with radiation. For this purpose, the Poseidon is speculated to be equipped with a cobalt bomb. Meteor rain used like missiles. I think this entry might just be saying that hypothetically some weapon could control meteors and use them like missiles. Climatic control weapons. Prior to the Environmental Modification Convention signed in Geneva in 1977, the United States used weather warfare in Vietnam War. Operation Popeye saw the use of cloud seeding over the Ho Chi Minh Trail. It was hoped the increased rainfall would reduce the rate of infiltration down the trail. A research paper produced for the United States Air Force written in 1996 speculates about the future use of nanotechnology to produce artificial weather. These clouds of microscopic computer particles all communicating with each other to form an intelligent fog. It could be used for various purposes. Artificial weather technologies do not currently exist. However, the treaty does not directly condemn military use of weather modifications when it does not directly cause harm. The limitations allow weather warfare to continue to play a role in warfare throughout the 21st century. Scalar Waves Weapons A scalar wave is a proposed type of electromagnetic wave that works outside physics as we know it. Some have wholeheartedly adopted the concept of scalar waves as a form of dangerous mind control, mostly because it sounds scary. And it's easy to make people afraid of anything related to modern wireless technology, even if it actually isn't. Internet fearmongers vigorously promote the idea that scalar waves are some kind of treacherous radio waves. For example, many people perceive that the shift from analog to digital television and feel mind control messages must be embedded via the flickering of the TV picture, and believe that the use of such evil waves allows mobile phones and Wi-Fi to program people. These mythical scalar waves are somehow even supposedly able to produce crop circles, earthquakes, and hurricanes too. Now we're on the final layer, layer number 8. Death's Hand or the Dead Hand Perimeter System is a Cold War era automatic nuclear weapons control system. It's similar in concept to the American ANDRC-8 Emergency Rocket Communication System. Death's Hand was constructed by the Soviet Union. The system remains in use in the post-Soviet Russian Federation. It can automatically initiate the launch of Russian intercontinental ballistic missiles by sending a pre-entered highest authority order from the general staff. It would be able to go off even with the commanding elements fully destroyed. By most accounts, it is normally switched off and is supposed to be activated during times of crisis. However, as of 2009, it is said to remain fully functional and able to serve its purpose when needed. The purpose of the Dead Hand system, as described, is to maintain a second strike capability by ensuring that the destruction of Soviet leadership would not have prevented the Soviet military from releasing its weapon. In the event of an all-out attack, it could send missiles without any humans controlling them. Now, the final one, 
antimatter bomb. An antimatter weapon is a theoretically possible device using antimatter as its power source, as a propellant, or as an explosive for a weapon. Antimatter weapons are currently too costly and unreliable to be viable in warfare, as producing antimatter is enormously expensive. It's estimated that it costs 6 billion for every 100 nanograms. The quantities of antimatter generated are very small, and current technology has great difficulty containing antimatter, which annihilates upon touching ordinary matter. Putting the power of antimatter to scale, 1 gram would be the same as the atomic bomb an antimatter weapon is part of the plot of the Dan Brown book Angels and Demons, where it's used in a plot to blow up Vatican City. That was the weapons to be used in World War III Iceberg. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you and have a good rest of your day.